Welcome to the 2023 interview series. I'm Sabrina Shotten Hamill, and today I have with me my one of my dear friends, Catherine. And Catherine, um, how do you say your last name? Favreau? Close. Favre. Favre. Oh, it's much easier than I was making it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So this is Catherine Favre. Please, Catherine, introduce yourself. Okay. Well, like I said, you said, my name is Catherine Favre. Um, I'm originally from California and now I live in Southern Illinois. My whole family moved about 12, 13 years ago. I um, currently, I am a nurse instructor at a nearby community college. And I also have my own business, which is called That Magnificent Mama, where um, I teach moms how to, um, how to have a better birth, helping them um, using movement, um, positions and some labor tools to have an easier birth and give those moms a confidence to be a part of their own birth instead of uh, giving that away to the OB providers. That's that's basically what I do. Okay. I love it. Yeah. I mean, I, I've never, I'm not a mom, so I have never been through that process, but I know many of my friends have gone through that process and it's a very sacred process, yeah. you know? I agree. I agree. I don't think we um, know how blessed we are or what a beautiful process birth is. I, th I think um, something we need to put back into our tradition of birth mm -hmm. is kind of the process that it is. It's, it's a beautiful thing to watch. As a labor nurse, I never tired of seeing a birth. I've seen thousands and I n never was I ever bored by seeing a baby being born. It is truly a, a miracle process to see. Yeah, it is. So, so true. Yes. Catherine, how did we meet? I believe we met about a year ago, right around this time. And we were both in the same community of women, mostly women. There were a few men, I think, in there, but mostly women wanting um, Christian based, I would say, as spiritual, wanting um, Bretton to learn. What was the group called? Um, you know that, group? Yes. Yes. Unshakable confidence. Thank you. Yes. Which was really about us pouring into ourselves, learning about our talents so we can share those talents with other women. So, um, well, my business is about women. So I always think of women, but, mm -hmm. um, that was a great, that was a great community. I really enjoy that community support community. You can't beat it. Oh yes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Jennifer has been my coach for, I don't know, around three years or so. Um, and she's become a really good friend of mine and she has connected me to a lot of men and women that have enhanced my life in many ways. Yeah. 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 No, that's a good group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, tell us a little bit about your passions. I mean, I know you said you love the birth process and being there yeah. for women, but what are some of your other passions that you have, Catherine? So before I found my labor passion, I was, I've always kind of been connected to the mom and baby community in one way or another. I was a preschool teacher. I loved, um, I loved being a preschool teacher. It was really a lot of fun. And I also loved supporting moms. Even back then I was helping moms how to, uh, how to um, get the baby to sleep through the nights. So I've always been involved. I was a, um, a nursery director our children's director at our church. And I had programs together. I was actually a, um, a crisis pregnancy center peer counselor volunteered there. That's definitely one of my passions is um, wanting um, to help women uh, in general, I guess, realize the great power that God has given them and, and how their lives is so much better when we embrace the women um, what a blessing it is to be a woman when we can embrace that. And so I've always want the word empower just seems like it's thrown around so much, but there is something to that letting them see what a beauty it is to be a woman of, um, and a child of God. And so that's always been my passion is just showing women how many blessings and how unique we are and just in Christ. So that's always been kind of a passion of mine. Mm -hmm. Besides that, I have three boys. So of course, family, always a passion. I've always, and um, as far as hobbies and things, I'm a farm girl. My dad was a cotton farmer. So I grew up on a ranch. So 
Um, we have chickens here. I have a four wheeler, those kind of uh, outdoor gardening things. I don't know if it's really considered gardening, but um, being outside a lot. Those are some of my other passions. I love that. And did you move to Southern Illinois so you could have more land and grow and have a uh, have chickens? <laughs> Um, yes and no, I guess we were, my husband and I met in California and we loved the area. Southern California is very expensive and we didn't live on a farm there. And so we did want to expand and have more room. And it ended up, he had family that had bought in land here a long time ago. So we kind of came back to where he actually was born in Indiana nearby. So we kind of ended up back here for more land. That was definitely one of the reasons. Um, more of a country lot. All those, there's more country in California than you would think. Oh, really? You just see the coast on, you know, on TV, all you see is the coastline of California. There's a lot more to California than the coastline. <laughs> yes. Uh, and I was just talking the other day with someone. I've been to California for a conference, but I never got to explore California. So I really haven't been to California yet. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's, um, there's a lot of things. There's desert, mountains. I mean, coastal. It's got it's de it's all of them. It's uh, everything there. So mm -hmm. it's an interesting interesting state for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. I'd love to explore it at some point. Yeah, it's fun. Wonderful. Uh, so, how did you get into this line of work? I mean, you said you were a nurse, and yes. you've always have been involved with moms and children, but was it, did it spark from childhood or tell us how you, how you got into this line of work? So I kind of fell into the nursing. I hadn't, I was a stay at home mom for 14 or 15 years and I kind of fell into nursing and what maybe people don't know when you're in nursing school, you don't always know where you want to go and you get to go to visit many different parts of the hospital. And the whole time they're like, where am I going to work? Nothing really clicked. And when I walked into OB, I was like, oh, this is home. The minute I was there, I was like, this is where I belong. I had no idea I was going to pick labor and delivery. I had no idea. And then at some point after being a labor nurse for eight years, and then I was a recovery nurse for like four, it was time to retire. I really didn't know what I was going to do. So I was talking to a um, doula. She's a good friend of mine. And we became good friends online. Actually, during the pandemic, we kind of met through different uh, a different group. We started talking, and I was like, you know, when I was a labor nurse, so many moms thought that they could just walk into the hospital, and they would just be like, well, whatever the OB provider wants to do for my birth, that'll be fine. He said, I can have an epidural. That sounds good. I'll just do that, and I'll just see what they want to do. And that means. Then that when I see these young girls coming in and they walk into the hospital and they think that's a really good plan until they literally walk in the unit and I'm their OB nurse. And then you see the fear in their eyes and they're like, oh, I kind of wish I'd known just a little bit more before I'd gotten here. And things have changed. Things constantly change. When I was um, a young mom, epidurals were not there. So it was on you to figure out how you were going to deal with labor and birth. And that's kind of been taken away from the moms. Healthcare's changed. Doctors don't have the kind of time they used to. I've never met anyone ever tell me that their OB doc said, so what's your plan for birth? How are you going to deal with pain before the epidural? Do you know about induction, the good and the bad? I've never heard it because the truth is a doctor already knows what he's going to do. He already knows how he wants to deliver your baby. And I just realized there was this big gap. The hospitals are not um, having birth classes. And the pandemic wiped out anything they were having. And too many moms were walking in overwhelmed. And then in postpartum, I would sometimes be over there. We kind of float around as an OB nurse. We do a little bit of everything. And these moms would be disappointed in the birth they had. They, did, they were like, I didn't know this. I wish I had known this. I didn't like this. And so I want to give them back that experience of motherhood, that journey where they're a part of it. There's, um, there's this quote and I want to bring it. I brought it up on my, my one time because this is probably my motto and I love this one. It said, 
It's by um, Kimmy Johnson. She's on Instagram and this is her quote. So it says childbirth should be a natural event that occasionally needs medical intervention, not a medical event that occasionally happens naturally. Hmm. And that's where we're at now. And through this, um, me talking to this doula, we just realized how much I want to help moms through that journey of mom. It's a wonderful journey. We want, you know, we want to rush everything. We want an easy button. But think, what happened if we were to become pregnant and had a baby in two months, like a dog, and have a baby? We would be overwhelmed. What? We only have two months to get ready. It's actually grace that it takes nine months. So you have time to transition from a person who's used to taking care of yourself and maybe your household with your husband. But soon you're going to come home with a, a little one that's totally dependent upon you, can do nothing. That takes time. That's a transition into another type of a different person. Motherhood is different. And that nine months, I would like for us, instead of being like, I mean, yes, we're by the end of it, we're ready. We're ready to have a baby. And there's a reason why it's nine months, because for you to ask for that kind of a difficult challenge to come your way, you have to really be ready. But um, we just started talking and realizing how that's been taken away from our culture. We just walk in and go, well, whatever they want to do. But then you're left and people don't realize you remember your birth forever. It's an imprint. You don't just kind of go, oh, it really, really didn't work out like a bad shopping day. I'll just, the next time will be better. You're left with that imprint. It's, a, it's an event like your marriage, like those big moments. It's one of those. It's a mile marker. And I don't think people realize the impact it has on them afterwards. And it made me sad. It made me so sad to see those moms. I'm not digging on the OB doctors. I'm glad they're there. And I don't blame them. They're taught as doctors to be interventionist. If I need a new hip, a new knee, a gallbladder removed, appendix, that's what they're there for, to make something that's unnatural that's happened and to fix it. But see, birth isn't about fixing anything. It's a natural event. And I want to show moms that the doctor only knows what he's been told. He's a medical person. He wants to intervene. Birth does not need intervention so often. Even if you have an epidural, there are so many things moms can do to be involved in their birth. And I just want to give it back to them. I want to give them their knowledge, their power, their voice, instead of just walking in and going, well, whatever you think. Because, you know, I don't even like to even, I teach some, but I do a lot of coaching because I already know how I would do my birth. If I had a fourth baby, I already know what I would do. But I don't know how Sabrina would want to do her birth. I can't tell you. And so that's what I do. I show people tips and things they can do. But we also talk about well, what, what is, what does your birth look like? If you had a birth fairy who came down and said, I'm going to give you your dream birth. What is that for you? Because I bet they aren't going to look like mine. And what would look like the doctors or the nurses? And so that's what I try. Um, that's where all this came from is me. I was just discussing the doula, what she had seen. And we, it broke our hearts. We would talk to, we have Zooms with young moms. We used to have these Zooms of them saying the doctor would just say, so would you like a 39 week induction? And she's like, okay. That was their whole discussion. And she walked in and it was a failed and she ended up having a C-section and she knew nothing. And so it was just really through um, my eight years of experience as a labor nurse and then talking to someone else who was helping moms have birth. We just realized how we willingly just thought, well, I'm going to trust my doctor and they're great, but birth is natural. It's not an appendix. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't need, you know, and so. It kind of just came from a necessity of me wanting to find the next step in my in my life and looking back and seeing how I could help women still. That is really wonderful. And you said, you know, the, the word empower gets thrown around a little too much, but it does. It gives a woman the yes. the plan. Yeah, the yes, things don't always work out on on labor day, <laughs> but at least you are empowered. You are set in what to expect. 
And then of course, if there's some shifting that happens, you have to also expect that too. And know ahead of time that, yeah, this is our plan, but we have plan B, C, D, who knows? And, you know, yeah, just giving them the knowledge and the power to make the decision instead of just, okay, doctor, you, you know, it's best. You just, you tell me what to do and I'll just agree. <laughs> I, I often tell them you can't make a decision if you don't have the knowledge from your choices. And I, part of what came from also was me learning all the things I wish I'd known when I was a labor nurse. There are a few things, there are more than a few things, I, unfortunately, that I have learned that I so wish I knew when I was a practicing labor nurse. Um, there's, we love using one thing, I, this would be a real, that I love using, it's called brain. And when a doctor comes in and wants to do something, we want the mom to stop and think, what's, what's the benefit? What's the risk? Are there any alternatives? Um, what's her intuition telling them? Because the mom's in tune to her own body. What, what does she think sounds right? And even, can I, can I just do nothing for a little bit? Can I just pause? Instead of just the first thing that comes out, like stop and think about, kind of go through all of these. I just want moms to be informed because you can't make a decision when you don't have your information. And so I, I learned some wonderful things through taking, I'm an authorized peanut ball trainer. I've taken spinning babies classes. And I use a lot of their techniques, learning about how in the end, the baby's um, move through the pelvis is amazing. I used to really think, and this is really sad as a health person, <clears throat> healthcare worker, I used to think the baby just went straight through the pelvis. The, pe the baby tucks their chin and they, they turn and rotate and move down. Tuck, turn and rotate, move down. And moms can have such an impact on helping that baby move through the pelvis. And I always thought that it didn't really matter what they did. I didn't realize the mom literally can help baby to get in a better position, to move, baby get stuck. I do the analogy, which I've been told isn't really nice to consider a baby next to a refrigerator. But if you think of a new appliance, have you ever had to get a new appliance to fit through your door of your house? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we did this recently. and. An inch can make all the difference in that refrigerator coming through your front door or not. Well, sometimes all your baby needs is an inch to be able to tuck that chin just right and move down to the pelvis and have a vaginal birth. Sometimes it's just a little bit of room. Um, you know, all the things I didn't realize, the head is shaped differently. The top of your head is not the same as kind of like this back part, like where the little hat could be on. So when they tuck their chin, that's the smallest part of their head. But if they come straight on, it's a larger, it's um, an, over an inch difference. An inch is everything. Wow. And so um, I just love that there is so much to the anatomy, how God has devised our bodies to deliver a baby. And, you know, pregnancy is that start of motherhood. And birth is the final, final part before you become a mom. And I think if we can, if we, realize the empowerment that is. I remember when I was um, becoming a nurse, I was talking to someone about the, it took me a couple of years. I had young kids and um, I was finally going to graduate. And the person said, that is your journey into the next step of your life. As I walked across that stage to get my diploma, to be an RN. Well, that's kind of what birth is. That's the final moment of walking across the stage. And now you are a mother. And instead of us trying to skip through everything and being as quick, we need to embrace that because that's the powerfulness of us becoming a mom is actually giving birth to a new life. And so I just love how we can incorporate all of this, the process of birth, of us becoming a mother, um, transitioning, you know, just from that single person that's in charge of our own bodies to a, a new life. Um, I love all of it. I could talk birth and tell everybody else's eyes roll in back of their head. Yeah. Well, it seems that you are very passionate about it and you're very well versed in all aspects of childbirth and motherhood. Oh, thank you. I, I still, I still um, take trainings. I still read things. Um, 
always trying just um, to be able to give more, not just knowledge, more, um, what, what would you say? I guess not always just information, but helping moms figure out what they want most. So I have more opportunities. I have more alternatives, more things I can give them. So yeah, I, I enjoy learning about um, oh. the physiology of birth. That's so lovely. I, I, I enjoyed seeing your passion come through as you were speaking. Oh, <laughs> it's beautiful. Well, Catherine, how can my audience and everyone that's watching this video, how can people find you? Sure. I am definitely out there. I am on Instagram and I'm, it's, um, my company is called that magnificent mama. So they can go to Instagram and they can find me there. I have tips and different things um, for moms. I go from practical to showing you how to open up the pelvis in certain areas to help baby get through down to thoughts for you to think about before you get there. So lots of great things on there. Okay. Well, thank you. And I really appreciate you taking the time to have this discussion with me. And um, I will definitely include your Instagram with the description great, so people can great. connect with you. Thank you, Sabrina. I've, been, I've enjoyed um, the time. Thank you for letting me come on and, and talk about my favorite subject. Of course. All right, Catherine, have a good one. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Hey there. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos. Definitely hit the like and subscribe button and turn on your notifications. So each time we drop a video, you'll be the first to notice. And also I'd really appreciate this if you share this with a friend or family member and spread the word about my YouTube channel. Thank you. I love you. Mwah.